Well, hey everyone, this is Richard and welcome back to Stuff We Can Do in Excel. Uh, we're going to do something a little different today. Usually in these videos, I will show you how to use a particular Excel or Tableau or, or uh, uh, Power BI skill or tool. Uh, today what I want to do is take all the tools that we've been learning in Excel and I want to use those to perform what we call a Benford's Law test. Now, I've got a video on explaining what Benford's Law is, but in case you're not sure, Benford's Law is simply a tool that exploits the knowledge that numbers do not occur randomly. It's been proven that numbers occur in a specified pattern or a specified fight frequency. And if we know what that frequency is, we can exploit that frequency to then discover something about uh, the underlying data set to determine whether or not it conforms to that expected frequency or not. So what we're going to do is just go look at some data and see how we would do this test. So here's the data we're working with. Um, we've got some data here. It's got the date, customer name, item, unit price, quantity, sales amount, uh, sales tax and total sales. Now I'm going to add a column to this. I'm going to call this column first digit because to work with our um, Benford's law, we're going to need to know the first digit of each one of our target variables. Now we're going to use total sales as our target. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to use the left function to identify or separate out the first digit for all of that. So if I go equals and go up to my function line, I'm going to hit uh, left and it's going to tell me first to pick the target that I want. That's what's in ever an H two there. And I want to go just the first digit. So I'll just hit a one. I'm hit, okay. It's going to tell me that the first digit is a seven. And now all I have to do is copy that down the page. And so I've copied that down the page. The next thing I want to do is I want to name these ranges. It's going to be a little more helpful to me to do this than to keep identifying ranges. So what I'll do is I'll highlight all of this data and I'm going to go in and name the ranges. And the way I do that uh, is I'm going to go to formulas and then I'm going to do create from selection. Now remember, if I create the data, the range names before I create a table, then as I add information to the table, it will add the information to the um, named range. If I wait until after I create the table to create the named ranges, then, then when I add stuff to the table, it does add it to the table, but doesn't add it to the named range. And so we always want to do our named ranges first. So I'll go to create from selection and you'll notice that over here, there are no names yet. When I hit on create from selection, uh, I'm going to say create from selection. I click on that and I'm going to just use the top row. And I'll say, okay. And now under this, I've got all these different named ranges here and I can now convert this to a table. So I'll do insert and I'll say table. I do have headers and I hit OK. So now my data is all in a table and I can use it. The next thing I want to do is to measure how often each one of these first digits occurs. So I'm going to create a new table starting in L1. And that's going to, the first thing is going to be the digit that I'm looking at. And that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. The next thing I want to do is I want to do the count. I want to know how often that digit occurs, and I want to know the percentage of the time that it occurs. Then I'm also going to want to know my Benford percentage. And my Benford percentages are going to come from the table that we saw earlier uh, when we looked at the lecture on uh, uh, what, uh, what is a uh, Benford's law uh, table, what is a Benford's law test. And those percentages are as follows. And I'm going to go ahead, by the way, and I'm going to format these columns right here as percentages because I know I'm going to need to do that. And I'm also going to add them. When I put in the first percentage of 30.103%, it's going to round it off to two decimal places. I want that to be three decimal places, so I'm going to hit do that. And I'm going to actually do that for all of these. I'm going to add a decimal place to it. And so now uh, when I type in my other, I got 17.609% of the time, twos occurs the first digit, threes occurs the first digit 12.494% of the time, fours occur 9.691% of the time as the first digit, uh, fives 7.918% of the time, sixes 6.695% of the time, sevens are the first digit 5.799% of the time, eights are the first digit 5.11. 5% of the time and nines occurs the first digit 4.576% of the time. Now, how do I get my count and my count percentage for my actual numbers? Well, I'm going to go use the count if function. So I'll say equals and I'm going to go back up into my function line and I'm going to hit count. I'm going to use count if 
and it wants to know what I'm going to uh, use as my uh, digit and I can start typing in first and actually it, it works almost a little better if I don't use the function this time if I go and I count equals count if parenthesis and I start typing first ah there it is the first digit is actually right there I double click on that now I just hit a comma and I click on uh, the one is my reference so if what's ever in this cell over here equals L2 then I will um, uh, Put in that count and so I'll hit that and now I can just simply copy that down to all my columns now I want to make sure that I've captured all my data so I want a, a line that says total I can't even spell and that's going to be equals the sum of everything up here in the under the count column and it says 100 and that's right because I have 100 items in my database Next, I'll figure the percentage is simply going to be whatever is in my count column divided by my total amount. But that's going to have to be, I'm going to have to fix that. So I'll hit F4 to fix that. And now I can just copy that down and I've got my ranges. So the next thing I can do is actually create my Benford's Law table and my Benford's Law chart. So I'm going to highlight this chart of data and I could turn that into a table if I wanted to it's not absolutely necessary um, if I did create it into a table then I don't have to actually highlight it every time I refer to it I can simply go in and click anywhere in the table I can do an insert and I'm going to go over here to insert pivot chart and table and I'm going to actually put it on this worksheet and I'm going to put it right here uh, right up here in in cell two, Q1 and I hit OK. So it's going to create these, these forms for me. And what I want to do, I want to have digit in my uh, as my rows. I want to have my count percentage and my Benford's Law percentage. And I don't really like this graph. I'm going to convert that. So I'm, I, let's just show you my graph here. And I'm going to convert that to a line chart. So I'll go up here to change chart type and to a line chart. And if you watched my lecture on what is a Benford's Law test, uh, you will recognize this particular uh, configuration. This was the chart I showed you right at the end of that lecture. And I sh told you I would show you how we got it, and that's how we get it, using a pivot chart. Um, the orange is our Benford's Law percentages, these percentages graphed. And our um, uh, blue line is the percentages of our actual numbers. And you can see that ones and twos and sixes look significantly below where we would normally expect them to be. Now we see that that fours and fives are slightly above where we would expect them to be, and so are eights, but sevens and nines are significantly above where we would expect them to be. So the question then becomes, is this blue line, is it, does it conform well enough to Benford's Law to saying that this data is okay, or are there enough problems in this data that it would indicate that this data is not okay? So let's go, and the next thing we're going to look at is how to do a, uh, uh, squared mean difference test uh, on this data to determine whether or not it is uh, sufficiently conforming to Benford's law. So I'm going to go to uh, another page here and when I, whoop, I'm going to add a sheet. And when I add the sheet, I'm going to add it over here in, let's just add it in A1. Um, and uh, in A1, uh, I've already copied this from another spreadsheet, so I'll just paste it in. This is simply um, my decision table uh, for my Benford's Law Conformity Test. Uh, we're going to do an, uh, uh, this, this um, test to look at the, the average mean, the absolute mean, a absolute differences. Uh, and we're going to determine whether or not they fall within these ranges. So if the number falls between 0 to 0 0.0004, we're okay. Um, if it's between 0 0.004 and 0 0.008, we're not okay, or it's acceptable. If it's 0.008 to 0 0.012, it's marginally acceptable. But if it's less than 0 0.012, we're going to assume that there's non-conformity with this data. So next thing we're going to do is I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to copy the data from uh, this table because we're going to need it. And I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go back to sheet three and I'm going to put it in uh, right um, here in G1. And I'm going to have to expand that out and 
actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the formula a little bit because I know it's supposed to be 100 so I'll put that in there and there it goes so now I've got my data and the question is um, what's the difference between my count percentage and my Benford's law percentage so I'm going to add a couple of columns here one column is going to be my difference and the other is going to be my absolute difference These are going to be numbers I am going to need if I want to know uh, how my Benford's Law test is working or I want to determine whether or not it conforms to my data set. So the first thing I'll do is simply take the difference between um, my Benford's Law percentage and my count percentage. So I'll simply subtract those. So I'll say Benford's Law minus the count percentage and I get that number. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, I'm going to look at the absolute difference um, and I'm going to use a formula called absolute difference or ABS. So I'm going to do equals and I'll go up here and I'll pull that formula up for you so you can see it. So I'm going to type in A ab, let's see, ABS. Let's just see if that gives it to me and it doesn't. So let's go to all and there it is, ABS. So I'm going to hit OK. And it wants to know what my absolute value is. So I'm going to take the absolute value, whatever my difference is, and put it in this column. And there's my absolute difference. So some of these are below. Some of these are above, right? Um, some of these, the Benford's Law was higher than the observation percentage. Some of these, the uh, observation, and these, these are strange numbers. No, those are right, yeah. Um, so some of these were actually uh, above. Um, the Benford's Law number. Um, uh, the Benford's Law number me, was higher than the count. Some of those, the Benford's Law number was lower than the count. Remember, four and um, seven and eight to a certain, but seven and nine particularly were pretty much high above. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the mean of the absolute differences. So I'll simply go over here and I'm going to take a, uh, a, a mean function and I can do it a couple of ways. I can just simply say the average equals average and I'm going to highlight the range. And I'm going to get this value. Now, is this value greater than or less than? Uh, the, so I'm going to actually set up some conditional formatting on this. So I'll under conditional formatting, I'll say I'm going to highlight this um, if it is uh, between uh, 0 and oh, 0.004. I'm going to make this green. I like that. That's going to be green, right? Um, if it is, I'm going to get, if this item is between 0.004 and uh, 0.008, then we're going to do yellow. Okay, let's, let's just make that yellow. If that number, so now we'll do another conditional formatting that equals highlight if it's between 0.008 to 0.012. We're going to call that, I don't know if it's even got, it doesn't give me an orange option, but I can certainly choose one. So I'm going to go choose orange. Okay, and we'll, we'll choose that orange right there. And it, okay. Now, the next item is conditional formatting that highlight if it's, uh, let's see, if it's greater than 0 0.012. Then we're going to put that with light red and red. That means bad. And sure enough, look at that. It flashed red. If this had come out something else, let's just hypothetically say it'd come up 0 0.0005. Um, it would be green, right? But it's not green. It is red, which indicates to me that this data set over here does not conform well enough with Benford's Law for us to be happy with the distribution. We would want to look to see why these anomalies are occurring and see if they're legitimate or if there's in fact fraud going on. So that's how to do a Benford's Law test using some of the tools that we've learned in Excel. Hopefully that was helpful to you. If you like the video, uh, click on the like button below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We'll talk to you later. Bye.